Hey everyone, welcome uh, to the Good E Reader live edition on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Good Reader. My name is Michael. This is Peter. And what are we talking about today? Today, 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 we have a couple topics. Uh, a couple were actually, we were bouncing off each other here at Goody Reader, and a bunch of people have really recommended that we talk about this. So we have batteries. Can batteries be swapped? Uh, does it just apply to older things, newer things, etc.? We also have the rise of distraction-free devices. These are devices that really don't prioritize anything except single use purpose devices. And we're going to talk about e-ink smartphones because they've been around for about a year at this point. So it's time to really do a one year look back, go over some comparable data and see what we can see about them. Right. So the yes. right to, the right mm -hmm. to repair, that's sort of like the, the big sort of thing that we've talked about lately. Yeah with you know i i you know i'm a guilty pleasure i like watching sort of uh repair videos uh people right. repairing cell broken screen cell phones like iphones uh, nintendo switches switch lights uh, game consoles and all that type of stuff all you know if you want to repair an iphone everything from like transistors to like the usb ports the lightning ports you know easy to purchase you know nintendo yeah. switch screens that broke easy to buy them either from the nintendo itself or like authorized third-party dealers you know if right. the usb cable breaks <laughs> off you can just buy like an aftermarket version it'll totally work right e-readers on the other hand are not very easy to repair no see now a lot of the earlier stuff was quite simple to get into they were kind of like the early smartphones like the old lgs and the samsungs where you just take the back off the phone you can swap the battery you can put your little sim card in it's all very accessible and then in the corners you saw the little screws now everything is so tightly packed with aluminum frames and glass backs and glass fronts you almost have to take a heat gun to it for quite a bit of time in order to just remove the glue, the, the double-sided tape to get into them. And this is the same with e-readers. If you ever looked at a Kindle Paperwhite, it is so tightly packed, you can't get those pry tools in the sides. You can't get the, you know, your fingernails into the sides as you once could with the Kobo Glows and the Amazon uh, touches and stuff like that. I love that ringtone. And yeah, uh, yeah so it's just, it, it used to be that you could just open it up. If your device was old, you could just swap out your battery. And now it's just, it's not possible because everything is so just one and done and it's planned obsolescence. It's just, it's planned to just die and you buy a new one. Yeah. I mean, part of it is that e-readers these days, the screens are flush with the bezel for the most part, you know, right. uh, <clears throat> sorry. Uh, one second. So yeah, they're flush with the bezel, which basically means that he has to attend to a delivery there. Um, so they're flush with the screen and bezel, which means that back in the day, the, the panel was user removable. It actually was user removable. So you could open it up and take it out and you could actually buy batteries for about uh, 10, 20, $30 for your Cobalt Glow, your early on Barnes and Noble Nook, et cetera. And you just swap them in. They're very easy. Nowadays, everything is, it has the batteries like snap to the PCB. It has like a heat sink, double-sided adhesives. And everything is just so jam packed and tightly fit is that they don't want you to open up the devices and service them, which is why a lot of devices now have no screw holes. They have no uh, external torque screws. And even if you look at smartphones, for example, I have the Asus A phone, uh, Zenfone 5Z. Just looking at it, there's no way to get into this device. It's an aluminum frame with glass on the back and glass on the front. And e readers are a little less beautifully designed like this but they hold the same kind of concept and it's just it feels like there is no right to repair anymore when your device starts to die say you have a kindle basic 2017 well once that battery goes you're either going to have to go through the ringer to get into that to rip out that battery and potentially the double-sided tape and the heat sink paste and all that stuff or you just buy a new one 
Yeah, I mean, modern devices, basically, the battery won't need to really be replaced for like five or six years. It's like lithium right. ion batteries. Um, I've reached out to a number of companies like uh, Pocketbook, Onyx, uh, Boyu, Amazon, Barnes and Noble, and Kobo, and they said that they don't sell batteries like on their own. You have to like go through right. like a third party whose battery was not initially designed for that e-reader. From what that's I've... another thing. Yeah, you don't want to deal with non OEM, which is the original equipment manufacturer. If anything, if you're swapping components, you want to buy from the original source. Yeah, we've all heard about buying like third party wall chargers and they catch on fire or like it's crappy, <laughs> crappy USB cables that just like short out and like do charges and, you know, actually like ruin like capacitors that are on like the motherboard and things like that it's it's a problem and all, a lot of these companies told me that the reason why they don't sell batteries is because of clearance it's like almost impossible to just send through either the postal system dhl yeah. fedex all these types of things because you need all this like paperwork for it and it's just it's a hassle because a lot of countries won't even like allow the import of batteries on their own uh especially because they're on planes and we've heard that like you know, batteries catching fire on airplanes. Like I've read about this and this has been a big issue. It's, so it's a real thing. Yes. Uh, I, I actually work with the team that does a lot of the logistics here at Goody Reader. And I can tell you that uh, batteries, lithium ion, no one uses nickel cadmium and everything. Lithium ion, the rechargeable ones that you plug into your wall are considered DG, which is dangerous goods. And I won't go too much into it, but Michael is right. For example, you cannot ship a battery or a device with a battery via the post to Australia. That's an entire continent slash subcontinent that you can't ship batteries to. Whether it's built into the phone or not, it has to be shipped by someone that handles DG, dangerous goods like DHL. And then you get into the fact that a battery is the size of a post-it note and you're spending top dollar to use a high-end courier to ship your little battery. So it's logistically really unfeasible to sell $16 batteries and like $60 shipping to a lot of countries in the world. And there's hundreds of countries in the world. Yeah, I mean, if your device is under warranty, like generally when you buy a, a new product uh, from Amazon, like say you buy a Kindle, it comes with like generally a, a one year warranty. Yeah, and, right. and, you know, it basically covers like manufacturing defects. Uh, the problem is, is that over time, lithium ion batteries lose their charge. So if you have like a they Sony do. PRS T1, if you have like, uh, a Kindle three or a Kindle keyboard. Um, yes. You know, the, the Barnes and Noble simple touch with glow light, uh, the Kobo glow. A lot of these e-readers came out anywhere between like 2010 to about 2013. And that's generally the time where lithium ion batteries either lose their charge completely, or you basically get like one day of usage before the battery is dead and you have to like recharge it, which defeats the purpose of an e-reader that's supposed to last, you know, that's three right. to four weeks between like charges. And a lot of the times people will buy and it's the elephant in the room is that people aren't always buying new things. They buy used products like the Kindle Touch was a, uh, a device built way back when. And it was awesome. It had capacitive touch. It had dual audio on it. it you could do audiobooks, TTS. It had a lot going for it. And people still strive for those older devices like the DX, like the Kindle Touch. And then when they get it, it's like, oh, great. My, my device is great. And then we get down to about 25% battery life and then it dies. So that 25% wasn't even indicative of how much battery life you had left. It just suddenly would jump to the end and just die. And I've seen even some of my friends with uh, their old iPhones that they would buy like an iPhone 10. And they're like, you know, oh, whenever my phone gets to 15, that means zero. And it's just, it's dead. So, you know, you got to have it plugged into the wall, which defeats the purpose of a cellular phone to be plugged into a cord. So yeah, it's true. It's just the right to repair has seemed to have gone away. And um, people just don't want um, uh, customers messing with their, their goods, it feels like.
Yeah, it sucks too, because like most of, you know, not only is it the battery, which we, we've talked about, because that's the most common thing that goes on e-readers. Like, I know a lot of people love old Sony e-readers. So if they find like, yeah. an, you know, one of their first e-readers that they ever buy on eBay and it's like $50, it's like, hey, I'll buy it. It's like, you know, 50 bucks and it was like, you know, 300 new, but little do they know that the battery doesn't have a charge anymore but one of the other things no. is uh micro usb on e-readers like usb c's has only yes. been like a, a newer type of thing those right. ports are more durable to what e-readers first did was mini usb and then micro usb and, then micro, yeah. and you know basically you have to always plug the usb into the e-reader and then either to a wall outlet or to like your laptop pc mac to like charge it and if you keep you know especially like if it wiggles a lot it'll sort of like over time either bend like the the the, the little plug or like maybe one of the little spokes will like break and then suddenly right. you're with an e-reader that whose usb ports broken you can't get into it to repair it so what do you do you basically can't charge it anymore it's basically useless with a good battery or not if you're out of warranty there's really no way that you're going to be replacing that on your own so That's where does right. it go it goes to the landfill or to you know a lot of people just throw it in the trash. There are electronic recycling programs, yeah. but I know a lot of people and I've been guilty of this myself, just throwing a, a, like a, you know, 10 year old phone, like in the trash, you know, whereas really I yeah. should recycle it, but I've done it like, you know, back when I was younger and just didn't care about that sort of thing. Yeah. Every, I mean, back in the day where everyone just threw everything in the garbage, but uh, yeah, it's true because um we know that with cell phones, we talked about this last week, how cell phones are just, cell phones and tablets are so much cheaper because there's more people doing it than e-readers. There's only a couple factories in the world that do e-readers. And that trickles down to the consumer level too. If you want to repair a cell phone, there are repair shops everywhere. Every mall, every strip mall, they have those little kiosks inside, you know, it's like $15 screen repair, yeah. all that kind of thing. I, I got my battery repaired on my Zenfone 3 or something at like a mall in, in Burnaby near Vancouver. And it was like, you know, $40. You, you know, did the heat gun, took the glass off. They know how to do it. I come out with someone and say, hey, my paper white's dying. They'll be like, oh, what's a paper white? Oh, it's a Kindle? Oh, yeah, I don't. There's so few people. That, that, that sell e-readers, that service e-readers, that have anything to do with e-readers is that there's no repair shops. So when it comes time to you having to ship it back for a manufacturer's warranty or magically finding a repair shop that will work on an e-reader, it's going to cost. Because Good luck. NFL there there are none. It, and there are none. And even if there were, e-readers are so cheap and that's not a good thing because they're so disposable. You're just, you're just generating so much waste because it's like, oh, I can buy a new Kindle for 60 bucks, throw, buy a new one on Amazon. And it's like, sure, but at the same point, it's very wasteful. And that goes against all the eco-ness that the e-reader is supposed to inherently be about, you know, millions of books in one small slim device. And it's like, well, you're counteracting that with the fact that I can't repair it. I can't, I, I can't like fix it myself. I can't send it for repair. And I just have to buy a new one when it breaks. So it's unfortunate that it's kind of contradictory in that way. And that's all based on the fact that it comes down to batteries is that you can't even do something as menial as replace your own battery anymore. Yeah, and like, um, not to mention that a lot of e-readers now are waterproof. And what they yes. do is they add the waterproofing, uh, like technology to like the motherboard itself and like coat the actual components. So the battery right. actually can't be removed because it's like, it's a waterproofing foam that's like basically covering all the internals. Whereas like right. early waterproof e-readers didn't do that. They basically did it, uh, you know, I remember, uh, the first Kobo waterproof e-reader, they actually had a flap that protected the USB port. That's right. That if you wanted yeah. to get it wet, you had to like close all the little flaps exposing like, you know, the, the, the micro USB like port. Uh, because if water got in there, it would short circuit and die. So they had a waterproof flap and then eventually it was internal coating and you didn't have to like protect those flaps anymore. 
And that's what uh, even some of my smartphones were like that, like the Xperia smartphones I had, they had the little battery door, uh, not the battery door, the USB door, the SIM card door, and they were lined in this like rubber uh, grommets so that when you closed it, none of the water can get in. So um, yeah, that that's that's definitely something that we did see early on. So yeah, and the waterproof ones are even worse because they're even more tightly built to make sure that none of the water seeps through the bezel, seeps through where the screen meets the side. It's just like, they're making it harder and harder for people to repair anything themselves. And to manufacturers credit, they don't want uh, reputations of someone trying to you know, snap their Kindle in half to open it. So they discourage you from repairing it yourself. But for the techie people, it's like not, e it's not even easy for them. Yeah, and there's like very few tutorials out there and even oh, yeah. third parties don't make batteries for modern e-readers they only make them for like the devices that actually can be repaired like the kobo glow hd i think was the last That's kobo right. e-reader that actually could be taken apart and you could even swap out the sd card now with modern kobo e-readers they they solder the sd card directly to the motherboard so you can't even remove it unless you got like a heat gun and like you cover all the components to like the you know the sides of it with like special film and it's like it just makes it almost impossible for the average user to, to service yeah. their device and prolong the longevity to it. So you're lucky these days with like most e-readers having screens of glass, you drop it, the glass can shatter. What do you do? You can't replace the screen. Amazon or Kobo or all these companies don't make no. actual screens. And if you're outside the warranty, you can't repair it. So bring it to the recycling center and buy a new one. And, you know, most, most, you know, the thing about it is that that's sure if you have a Kindle basic that costs like 60 bucks or the oh, Kobo right, Nia yeah. that costs like $99. <laughs> yeah. But if you have the right. Kindle voyage or the Kindle or Oasis, the Oasis 3, 32 with warm lighting. Or, yeah. yeah or, or an LTE, o Oasis you're spending 3, yeah. like, you're, so you're spending like 350 bucks plus. So if you want like a larger screen and a better e-reading experience, you know, you want to buy the Oasis 3 from Amazon or the Kobo Forma, you know, that's also like 250 like plus dollars if you want to buy that. So, I mean, e-readers are pretty expensive, like uh, for the most part. Um, you they, can they have, uh, they occupy both ends of the spectrum. Yeah, there's a race to the bottom where you can get e-readers as low as $29 on sale. And then there's premium stuff like the Oasis 3, Michael was saying, 32 gig LTE. It's almost $480 Canadian when it finally lands after tax and the highest possible model. So yeah, I mean, e-readers are like, you know, they're, they're not just, they're not just those disposable $40 things anymore. They're, they're getting up there. Yeah, I mean, and there's a lot of people that do buy the higher end type stuff for, you know, Absolutely. whatever reason, the highest memory model for internal storage for their own library and so on. So all of these like little factors come together that once it's out of warranty and it breaks, there's really nothing that you can do because Amazon doesn't even have like an after warranty, like program you right. can't buy an extended warranty on your Kindle and go for like three to four years right. that this might be in specific markets but i know in canada that, that is not an option as same with kobo and barnes and noble they don't offer extended warranties in our own store we uh, offer extended warranties because like we deal directly with like these manufacturers and like a lot of them actually have repair centers obviously not amazon kobo barnes and noble but like right. sony pocketbook <clears throat> onyx books boy you super note uh, a lot of the bigger brands they have repair depots where out of warranty type stuff will be fixed at a fee but that's like why people pay extended warranties uh to protect against that and if like right you know, if the actual repair costs more than, you know, that the warranty is worth, you know, we eat that cost because like we want people who buy products from us to be protected and secure, especially if they're spending like 500, 600, sometimes a thousand dollars on a product, you know, they, they want to make sure that at least for like the next four years, they are protected against basically anything other than just yeah. like an act of God. <laughs> yeah, I mean, not to turn it too into too much of a pitch, but uh, a lot of people are always complaining about 
uh, certain manufacturers communication as well. So it's like I emailed them, they never got back to me. I had, uh, you know, a, my device that broke and all that. Well, because we're so big and widespread here at Goody Reader, we actually do talk to these manufacturers and distributors on your behalf because we have communications with them. So if you want to get things repaired, we can we can help you we can help facilitate that basically which is why we sell the warranty and we're one of the only guys to sell warranty across almost all the brands we sell is because yeah if you buy something from boy you you know boy you make some good stuff but let's you know call a spade a spade they don't have the greatest communication so if you were to contact them directly from morocco to boy you chances are you're never going to hear anything back but you message us i mean we're on youtube we're on facebook we're on email we got a phone number you know what i mean so we're there we're we're kind of present a 1-800 so number toll free yeah or one eight three three. it's toll free but it's a yeah so uh we're, we're kind of present and we're here we do these live shows so people rest assured that you know we're 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 active on a daily basis. So that's kind of why the whole thing about if you can't repair your item, if you drop it, if you break it, if your battery dies, we'll, we'll try our best to help you in, in any way we can. Which is yeah. I mean, a lot of the times, yeah. like even if you don't buy a product from us or don't buy a warranty from us, we still help people facilitate oh, sure. repairs, yeah. you know, oh, and I mean, on a weekly basis. Absolutely. Yeah, people we, say, where can I send my pocketbook? We say, yeah, we have uh, the address for the repair center. If you're willing to, you know, pay the uh, cost because you have like a three-year-old unit, you're out of warranty. You can definitely go down that road if you want. And we, help get it going and you know labels are sent in some directions and you know customers ship it they get numbers and we help facilitate all that difficult stuff yeah and i mean we do that commission free we don't actually make any money from that but it's no, just we don't like make any money on that we don't we believe we believe in e-readers and we like we and i personally the reason why like i continue to do this like whatever like 14 years after we launched goody readers is because i love reading i love technology i love you know whether you're reading on an e-reader or a tablet or a print book uh a manga listening to an audio book mm -hmm. i mean it's like consuming knowledge and it's like making you a better person and i mean and i'm a big advocate of like parents like reading the kids at like an early age there's yeah, like a lot of yeah. studies studies that have proven that like like kids these days like have word correlation and and can digest sentence structure at a very early age and exactly. this is like one of the cool things about just reading in general so i mean if you have a problem with a device that's three or four years old that you bought from Amazon or bought from Kobo and, or like, you know, from pocketbook or just an obscure weirdy reader, you know, we'll do our best to help you like get the repair process. That's right. Like started because the last thing we want is like you to just chuck it in a trash and they just contributing to like, you it's know, this like wasteful. the, the waste, wasteful yeah. culture, you know, that we live in. Speaking of weird brands of e-readers, like you said, we are going to do our flash contest for today and there's no rush on this. You guys can, whenever we see the right answer, uh, we will post the winner and we'll just chime in on the comments. This is what you are winning. This is the Xiaomi Mi Media temperature sensor. It's a black and white electronic display. It shows the uh, temperature of the room and the uh, humidity, it has a Humidex, and it has a little smiley face on there. It is factory sealed, and it's yours absolutely for free. We'll throw it in the mail. We will send uh, you a picture of your parcel. If you tell us what the first e-reader ever made was, the first e-book reader, that's all we'll say. If we see the answer for the first e-reader ever made, the absolute first e-reader ever made, if we see that in the chat, we will give this away absolutely for free. Let's get back to the program. Yeah, that's actually made by Xiaomi and it's actually yeah. sold like in Walmart, I think, and Best Buy and like a few other retailers. Uh, it's really, it's a great little like system because like it can sync with your phone, do Celsius and Fahrenheit. That's it is right. an e-ink screen. So it, it does last like basically like, I think it's like three or four months uh, because like the screen could go into standby mode if like you don't, you know, yeah. if you don't want it to, but Generally, oh, oh my god, <laughs> Queen just answered it. Oh no, we had we had someone say Nook, and that's a great answer. 
Uh, Nook was created very early on. They did make some of the first e-readers. They made some of the first uh, e-readers with glow lights. But unfortunately, Queen Cats right now just said Rocket Book. And you are correct, although that isn't the first e-ink device, which we didn't say, we said e-reader. That is absolutely correct. It is the Rocket Book. Um, and actually, Michael and I were talking about what question we should ask. And Michael says, well, let's talk about the first e-reader because people are going to say Kindle and Sony and Nook and great answers, but Rocketbook is the winner. So Queen Cats, you have won the media temperature sensor. So congratulations. Uh, so wow. uh, the Rocketbook, let me just yeah. show it to you guys like on the screen. It actually didn't use an e-ink screen. It used an LCD, but it was made a long time ago. I think 97, 97. Yeah, look at that. Yeah, Martin, so... scroll down. Yeah, Martin Herb Hand and Mark Tapperning. Look at that. Yeah, they developed it in like 1997. 97, uh, they actually shot the prototype to Jeff Bezos at yeah. Amazon, um, uh, but he passed cool, on man. it. And basically, yeah. he got funding from Barnes & Noble to actually release it. Uh, sold mm -hmm. 20000 in the first year. Uh, Bezos was impressed at this, but had reservations just because, like, you know, you basically had to transfer the ebooks from the computer. But he, you know, basically, he never lost sight of um, the rocket book and, you know, yeah, the yeah, sort yeah. of itch that it wouldn't scratch. So the rocket book basically led to the creation of like the Amazon Kindle, um, you know, almost like, I think the Kindle was like six years in development before it actually got released. Uh, we wrote like a huge yeah. post on <clears throat> the rocket book and how the first Kindle came to be. And funny fact, Neil Stevenson, uh, the guy like who was like, Basically, him and, and William Gibson basically pioneered like the, you know, the cyberpunk metaverse, yeah. like, you know, the early internet and stuff like that. He was brought in to be a consultant on the original Kindle um, because Jeff Bezos like grew up like reading his books and he was like super impressed with right. like how smart he was. And they actually remain friends to, to this very day. Nice. Uh, congratulations on that. Thanks for the info on the rocket book. Rocket book's super interesting. There's been a lot of early on iterations of e-readers and speaking on e-ink and moving forward, obviously that is what it's all about. E-ink phones, as we said in the intro, e-ink phones have been around in a couple different device structures. For example, this is a Yoda phone. And if you'll see on the back, it is e-ink. And now we have seen cases and dual screens like this, but e-ink smartphones, which are dedicated actual smartphones with no secondary screen have been around for about a year now. Well, so, some do have secondary screens. I know Hisense some makes have, uh, the right. A6L, which actually has like a, it's right. sort of almost like a Yoda phone, right? It's like a front facing LCD display LCD, and a rear facing right. uh, e-ink display, but that's sort of an, an anomaly. You know, Yoda phone that is pioneered like the dual screen LCD on one side, uh, and then it would mirror on the back, you know, the right. e-ink screen. It, it's sort of, it, it was early attempts at like a phone. Uh, whereas now the technology is like advanced where like you could actually use like the standard Android experience That's on right. like the rear of the phone rather than just like it being mirrored or immolated or right. something. And what we're talking about is just the e-ink smartphone. So what we're getting into is, could you replace your daily using, this daily phone that you're using, daily smartphone, and just grab something that is only e-ink, nothing else on the back. Your entire experience through your eyes is nothing but e-ink. So we have seen basically nothing in the past couple of years. And then all of a sudden, mid 2019 to 2020, so many manufacturers have come out. Hisense, uh, the Card K-Tie by Docomo, the Kingro, which never really came out in, in any large capacity. Face Note. I mean, there's been a lot that have come out. The Light Phone uh, 2. The Light Phone, that's right. And these are all phones that don't have anything on the back. It's just a phone. You pick it up, everything you do, all the images, all your Facebook feeds, all your Instagram, all your web browsing, it's all done through the e-ink phone. Now, uh, Michael, I will ask you this. Could you put down 
your iPhone or Android and use an e-ink phone on your daily basis. Could you do that? Well, there is actually <laughs> an interesting other phone that we didn't talk about. It called I just saw you the, typing away there. the Mutita Pure, which was- oh, uh, we did that on our top five. That's right. It was, it was our uh, honorable mention that the team came up with. They, they, they yeah. put it in there. That's right. Let me yeah. show it to you guys. <clears throat> It wasn't a smartphone. I think it was just a e-ink cell phone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That it's, one. Yeah. It's basically done mm -hmm. by the guy that. Uh, um, that looks cool. Yeah, he he's basically did The Witcher and cyberpunk video games. Yeah. Um, Two, but yeah, eight, it's 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 basically eight, like like a, a smartphone that can do text messages, like a breathing yeah. app. It it's meant to like be like basically just like a rudimentary phone rather than it being a smartphone. So it's a different take right. on the e-ring experience because most have been like fully featured Android phones. Whereas like things like this are, are sort of bucking the trend, but this is sort of like, they were supposed to release it numerous times this year, but it's being pushed back in the next year. Uh, COVID, you know, we just live yeah. in a world where oh, the supply yeah. chain is just <clears throat> constrained right now. Hit a wall. Um, but, uh, going back to the question, Michael, uh, you don't have to dwell too much on it, but could you put down your iPhone that you use every day for your calls, your business, your emails? Could you put that down and use an e-ink phone? Could you do that? Well, to be honest, there, there was times where I would have multiple phones and multiple contracts. Like, uh, right. you know, I had like a Apple watch, like, uh, like, uh, yeah. like, um, a cellular connection. And then I had like. You know, my phone right now, I just have like um, XX Max, right. but I just pre-ordered yeah. like the Pro Max, which is like a 6.7 inch like screen. It's like absolutely the huge. The 12, yeah? Yeah, I was going to get the 12. I canceled right. my pre-order and then just like decided to go with like the larger screen instead and just make sure I always have a case uh, on it just in case like I drop it. Um, uh, but yeah. I had like a BlackBerry uh all the time like hmm. even until just a few years ago uh that yeah. i would just use as like a business email like sort of device where i would like check emails like if i went to hockey games or soccer games and stuff and something important i had to answer went through to that whereas like my iphone i generally don't have my work email on it i have more or less like yeah. just like my personal <clears throat> emails which i don't get a lot of uh compared to my business right. emails um but you know, it's like a media consumption device. I could use an e ink not as my daily driver, but I could use it as like a supplementary phone. Um, something where like, if I know that I'm going to be like flying and traveling for like more than 24 hours, catching multiple flights, yeah. I'll have to turn my phone off because it'll basically die in a day. Yeah. Whereas with the ink phones, I could just pretty well just throw it in airplane mode and just like leave it on and make important calls like if I need to. So, you know, I'm, I was thinking of going to Banff and going skiing. And I know when I've been to Banff before, uh, you know, you're on the mountains and a lot of the times like there's really no towers. And so it keeps searching for towers, which kills your battery. But with an e-ink phone, it, it, it doesn't kill the battery fa as fast as like, say like a fully featured phone would. That's right. Um, I actually remember when we went to uh, uh, Computex in Taiwan, you, me, and a couple of the other guys here at Goody Reader, uh, I was with the uh, guys we were doing the camera stuff. And one of the guys was like, does Mike always have that many devices? Cause you had a smartwatch, you had an iPhone, you had your Blackberry and you had your iPad with a data plan. And I was like, yeah, he has to be on, right? Cause- And then Mike I had my like, camera, like my SL, yeah, digital yeah. SLR camera. And, and that's right. So you're done with your phones, you whip out your camera. And I said to uh, one of our guys that was on camera, I was like, yeah, I mean, Mike has to be on cause he's the one talking to like e-ink in Taiwan. He's the one going over to Netron like he's the one that you know leads the news team so it was just funny that you said you couldn't have it as a sec as a daily driver but yeah i mean phones are mostly uh all in ones now like even me for example i have my asus phone and i have two sim cards in here one from when i'm at the japan office and one for my canadian smartphone uh plan and they're always on and i have both sims as dual sim so i don't really need a secondary phone but uh, smartphones have really come up. For example, Kingrow was making one and they never released it. So 
even though this was made and it's right here, this is an actual working phone. This is the King Grill K1. It's got uh, a very nice styling. It's got a SIM card. It's got uh, all, dual dual stereo audio. It's a great phone. Never came out. There's no way to get one. There's, we're not going to sell this just yet because it's such a relic that you can't even buy it. Um, and it's like the, the Entourage uh, Edge. It's like it just came and went so fast. And it was such a right. unique device that's like, we hung on to like the big screen and the small screen model just because right. they were like relics from the past that were just so unique for its time. I know Kingro did a crowdfunding campaign, but they only like yeah. shipped off like 10% of all orders. And then they pivoted their business to like being a B2B business, but their MOQ right. was like, yeah, you have to order like 500,000 phones. Uh, that'll be like somewhere in the neighborhood of like somewhere like around $99 million dollars to like really <laughs> to, to do it. And it's just, you know, makes it unfeasible for anybody to like really do it, which is why That's Hisense right. was like pretty well the only company in 2020 that actually released some quality smartphones. Yeah. There was some other now, fringe Hi players, but they never really like did anything. Like Lightphone 2, I think is like not even shipping yet, or they shipped off like the first batch. A lot of, you know, Muti de Prior's like delayed after delayed. So it's like all these kind of cool alternative e even Onyx, the Onyx phone that was announced at CES this year, they haven't like released it yet. And I actually like asked them the other day, it's like, hey, are you guys gonna release the Onyx phone too? And they're like, not in 2020, we, we, we will do it next year. Whether they do or not yeah. remains to be seen, but they did release an e-ink phone, like what, like seven years ago? Like it, it wasn't even yeah, like- Yeah, yeah. And it was actually a deadly device. It was actually like way ahead of its time. And this was before front lights on e-readers existed. So it, it didn't have a front light. Um, this was before E8 Carta. So it was using an E8 Pearl display and like the yep, re yep. refreshing was like a big issue. But, you know, I'm- um, you have to sort of release these devices to see if there's like a market for it. And this was, I think they even released it before the Yoda phone was released, or maybe they did it first. Uh, well, this the, is the going Onyx like, this is going like eight or nine years ago now. So yeah. Yoda phone has always been a, a combination though. It's always been an LCD smartphone with a e-ink panel. The, uh, the Onyx phone was an Onyx. E a single screen like e-ink phone. Yeah. yeah. And going back to Hisense, Hisense, if you guys don't know, is a very, very big company worldwide. They sell TVs, uh, microwaves, refrigerators, stuff like that. They killed it in 2019, 2020 with the ink phones. Commercially available, working, uh, SIM cards, you know, uh, works on T-Mobile, works on at and They had five devices come out within a 12-month period. They More importantly... Uh, they had English and multiple languages yes. on their phones. So Sorry, it wasn't, I, you're right. it I, wasn't just like a Chinese like device that was only in Chinese show you and English users could yeah. use. I, I told you about this, Mike, but we never touched on it. And I, I threw it over to the uh, review team and they're like, uh, we're not, we can't do anything with this. This was sent to us randomly in a box from DHL. The company's name, I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to be mean, but it was just like Shenzhen Technologies, Inc. So I'm like, all right. It was a e-ink smartphone packaged well, very, very well. Looks beautiful. Came with like a QQ uh, 10,000 Chinese yuan gift card. Uh, looked great. And here it is right here. Like it's, a, it's an actual e-ink smartphone. And there was nothing in the box. There was no promotional information. Usually there's a guideline of what we should talk about when we do the review. It was a blind, like just shipment to Goody Reader. And we opened it. We're like, oh, okay. Like it looks great. Flush screen and bezel all in Chinese. And that was the thing. And you're right. Like Hisense did it and did it well. They made the Hisense, the A5, the A5 uh, Pro. And more importantly, they made two color e-ink phones, the A5C and the A5 Pro CC. These aren't jokes. They're actually really good. They run uh, multi-core processors. They have speed modes, which means you can watch videos in color with audio. It, it was a usable usable phone and i they sold a bunch of them and we ourselves uh were working on distribution we got distribution we shipped off hundreds of them all over the world and yeah they were in english and they worked everywhere so hisense is a a beautiful example of 
e-ink phones can be done if they're done well. You know, you have to commit to it. And they were done perfectly well to the point that even another company, FaceNote, actually used the Hisense A5 shell. It actually says Hisense on the back and made their own device. And they made the beautiful boxes and promotional stuff. And they white labeled the devices off Hisense because they saw the success. And this again is multi-core, English, Android, Glowlight, et cetera. So it's just quite amazing. Yeah, you know, it, it's hit or miss. Like most of the cool e-ink innovation is done by companies in China because like that's where the e-ink manufacturing factories are. Uh, that's where like a lot of the key e-ink executives are. So it's easy to like, create e-readers that are all oh, yeah. in Chinese for the China market to make smartphones entirely for the Chinese market. And then there's companies that do it for the Chinese market, but they do, but they also have the international market in mind. So they make it so like it's, it's available in China, but for importers, like we'll, we'll deal with companies in North America, Europe, uh africa and stuff like that for distribution because like we support all of your languages and stuff so you know there's a you know we just did like um preliminary talks on our top by our top 10 e-readers uh of yes. the year and we That's left right. off a lot of the cool e-readers that were entirely in chinese just because like most of our audience is not in china you know we're we're english speakers you know what i mean like we're you know yeah we're, we're from Canada. So we basically like put a, a Canadian English language spin on things. And, and most of our like audience is like from the States, Canada, the UK, Western <laughs> Europe, uh, typical Canadian yeah. countries, because that's what all, all of our content for videos to review videos to uh, yeah. all of our, our written content, uh, everything's all in English. So we typically like, we typically like, promote more English language e-readers and don't really, I mean, we review everything. So if it's like a we pure Chinese, everything. if there's a, a Chinese e-reader that like looks cool, we'll review it. Even if it looks like it sucks. Absolutely. And a lot of them during our review will tell you that it sucks because it's just like a limiting experience. Like it's built build to be like fast and dual core processor, and, lots and of RAM. <laughs> yeah. They're, it's got they're, Android, but it's got Android 4. So you're like, well, sure it has Android, but <laughs> <laughs> you have four on there so and yeah i mean obviously we we speak english we have to we have to go with our strengths and, and we like michael said we review everything iReader sent us the smart two we did an unboxing we're going to review that Xiaomi sent us theirs it's all chinese the we're w7 that. moan you yep. know we like did the uh, iReader c6 we did the ifly tech uh c1 i think the both color devices english uh chinese only and it doesn't do any good saying, oh, it's all in Chinese. Oh, this sucks. Throw it away. No, we have to do the best we can. We have to appreciate and respect the models. And, you know, there's more people in the world that you don't speak English than speak English pound for pound. So we have to respect that and we have to do everything we possibly can. For example, right now, someone from Chile is saying hi from Chile. His name is Jose. Like, thank you very much for joining. Like, word up, Jose. Yeah, muchas gracias. Like, I can't, I apologize we can't speak Spanish to, you know, all the people in South America and Europe and stuff, but it's just the reality. But uh, I was going to show one more thing. Speaking of um, being internationally friendly, we have this really tiny phone. This is the Docomo Card Keitai. Yes, this is a phone. You can use this as a phone. It uh, has some apps on it, no access to Google Play. It's like a two-inch screen. Yeah, look at this. It's actually made to be the exact same, almost, uh, width and height as a credit card. And it's actually the size of four credit cards stacked on top of each other. This thing's really cool. It has audio. It's got USB ports. It's got volume. I mean, it's got a SIM card. It's, this is, compared to a regular smartphone, is about that big. It's really, really tiny. And uh, yeah, e-ink is reaching all corners of the world. So whether you need something to just maybe take on travel, throw a random SIM card in there and, you know, just keep this in you. You could effectively fit this in your wallet. Like you can put that in your wallet and that's your smartphone in there. So it's kind of cool that ink smartphones is what we're mainly talking about. We go off track, but that's what this is all about. Ink smartphones have gone from zero to 60 from nothing to something in what feels like overnight. We just saw some cases for iPhone four a couple of years ago. And now we have 
tons of e-ink smartphones just on our table here. It's like more than we can count to the point where people are sending random packages to us with e-ink smartphones in them. It's like, please review our stuff without actually telling us how or what your phone is all about. So yeah, I mean, we appreciate it all the same, but it's just amazing how big it blew up. Yeah, most of the times, like when we get review units, whether it's like anything, uh, generally yeah, we do. There's, we, we there's deal, a folder in there. Yeah, generally we get it all for free, so we're, we don't actually like pay for any of this type of stuff. So no. we're, you know, um, we are totally unbiased when it comes to reviewing the actual e-readers, both our written reviews right. and our video reviews uh, and comparisons, like on YouTube. Uh, most people, like you know, they'll reach out to us first. And just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Do, do you want to review Would this? Like and review yeah, and, and I'm like, you know, send us like a press kit so we know the key selling points, um, you know, because we get just so many review units that they all sort of blur together after a while. So if we get like a one page, like sell sheet or like, um, right. you know, what the device brings to the table, how you use it, if there's anything kind of cool and innovative about it, that's where anything we'll you talk want about us to it. Say something that's like the intangible features about it. Like this is the only one that does this. Like we need to know to sort of For sure. send us something random that's not in our language with no promotional material whatsoever without even an email follow-up or contact. It's like, I don't know what to do with this. So we'll probably actually end up giving it away and do a nice giveaway or something. Yeah. I mean, we just like to know like things that a lot of people don't talk about. Like if it has a front light, how many LEDs does right. it have? If, what, yeah. if it says Simple. a quad core processor, what processor are you using? Like um, what type of like, you know, how big is the storage? Like um, is it micro USB or USB-C? You know, right. it'll... A lot of this stuff, like initially, is only in Chinese, which makes it hard for us to like decipher. It does so we have always generally have to use like Google Lens and other things in order to do like instant translations. So just so we know what we're talking about when we review e-readers from like other countries. Uh, but you know, um, going back to just China, finally, you know, the reason why we review a lot of Chinese-only e-readers is because like. Being in Vancouver, I know firsthand that we have like a, a huge Asian population here, uh, not mm. just from China, but like, you know, Japan, the Philippines, uh, you know, Malaysia, uh, you know, sort of that, that pan Pacific region. So we got like very distinctive cultures here, but probably the largest one, at least in Vancouver and probably the same with like uh, Oregon and, and California and Washington state is like, because we're close to China. So we get like a lot yeah. of Chinese exchange <clears throat> students here. A oh, lot yeah, of sure. like, a lot of Chinese families will, will move here and they can't buy these e-readers from China. So how are they yeah. supposed to get them? You know what I mean? Uh, they want, you know, grandma wants to like read like her romance novels. And so, you know, she can't do it on a Kindle because they don't really have a uh, large amount of Chinese books. So you kind of want to buy a Chinese e-reader that has a large Chinese bookstore built into it that you can buy books. And this is like great for like just anybody who speaks Chinese that is actually living in China, which is a large a fairly large demographic. A large, yeah, no, totally. Uh, moving on to our next topic, before we answer some of your questions, we see a lot of people weighing in on some questions. Elvis, hello from Brazil. That's very nice that you're dropping by. Uh, John Smith, Ang, everyone's chiming in, so that's good. Uh, last thing before we move on to some comments on the I got, here, so get your... So I got a funny email. You send out a newsletter okay. letting people know that... Um, that we were going to be doing this show sort of 24 okay. hours, like in advance. Well, I, and one, per I, I one person, out, somebody sent it out. <laughs> so, somebody. Okay. So we go, we sent out a newsletter right. and okay. somebody what responded to it from South Africa. And he's like, I would love to watch you, but your live stream is at like 4 a.m. My time. I love you guys, Aww. but I don't love you that much. Then he'll like stay up to like 4 a.m. just to like watch our live stream. So that made me so chuckle. <laughs> no, that's funny. And we we try our best. Like we're expanding here at Goody Reader. We now have operations in East Coast USA. Uh, I'm currently actually uh, spearheading the Japan office over here. So it's actually only uh, it's actually 10 a.m. for me on Sunday, November 8th, right now. So we we balance it out so that we reach 
everyone we possibly can. And 5 p.m. Pacific right now is the best possible time for the most viewers. So that's uh, unfortunately, uh, Mr. South Africa, we, we, we can't be uh, awake for you at that point. But uh, we actually were talking. Oh, see, look, John Smith is like, it's 4 a.m. here. See, that's amazing that he's, he's sitting down for this. That's we appreciate that a lot. That's amazing. That's um, right. Yeah. And so not only to say that you could just watch us live, but this is like recorded. Yeah. So you could watch yeah, yeah, it could, uh, video right. on demand. And you could actually, if you're watching the video yeah. on like the desktop or, or the mobile version of YouTube, you could actually see the comments on the left-hand side. There's a, um, there's a chat. So you could watch actually watch chat going as we're actually speaking. So that's like a cool little feature that like we... Uh, implemented yeah. and as you can see from the watermark we are using zoom and yep, we're right. in the midst of like getting some branding overhaul to like remove the zoom and add like a goodie reader logo so this is like our second live stream and so we're doing it every saturday uh 5 p.m pacific uh 8 p.m yeah. eastern and wherever your local time zone is you know what we we got to come up with a, a second time slot or something because i'm reading right here john smith says it's 4 a.m cornelia says it's 2 45 a.m right now in europe luca says hi i'm in italy it's almost 3 a.m right now uh Depromation Ray says it's 1 45 in the uk some guy named vm is like 7 a.m look at all these people staying up to these odd hours watching us like you 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 don't know how much that means to us that we 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 see your guys's comments we see your engagement this is very this is very touching and it is actually very nice that you guys are going out of your way to watch that we're trying our best to uh really be there for you guys at all times so thank you very much um, you guys are heroes topic, i will drink i would take a sip of my vanilla coke no, no branding endorsements no branding endorsements cover the label i'm gonna take a pic i'm gonna take a drink to that from my uh non-labeled black coffee here i'm not gonna show you the label you know, this oh, is probably... actually super hard to find. Like uh, uh, that, that, that flavor of uh, cola drink, you have of, to say? Of, of Coke Zero oh, uh, that's vanilla that's it. And, uh, and, and, and the cherry version. But they also make vanilla and cherry together. But it's like super hard to find. It's like yeah. there's like whoa, two stores in all of BC that I oh, found that actually man. sell it. But they don't actually ship it. You have to actually visit their store to actually buy it. So it's like... A very tasty drink and with like you know no sugar but it's like um you know it's the only cola that i drink and it's like very occasionally so i just did it as a celebratory celebratory toast C celebratory yeah oh, to like okay. all of our Someone viewers actually says they're gonna go to sleep soon so you know what we'll just we'll just go this uh, we'll, we'll we'll just go into one quick question and then we'll move back hi guys how often should i replace the note air stylus nibs and from where can i buy them uh good question we'll get to this uh for you in norway because it's 2 45 a.m you're gonna go to sleep <clears throat> the note air stylus nib is actually different than the other ones it's more conical meaning it's more pinpoint so um they they wear down a little bit more than the round plastic nibs but you can buy them from our site and we will do our best to keep the price as low as possible because i know it's a wear and tear item but uh you can buy them from our site you don't have to change it as much as like the sony it's not like that it's not graphite like a pencil so you'll be good with for those for a couple months it's not gonna really affect your drawing so yeah basically um, so helps. to answer your question uh i actually talked to onyx about this and they said like for the initial launch of the note air they weren't actually making uh it available to buy the styluses independently or the nibs independently initially they were supposed to do it at the end of october but they now right. said that the end of like november is when they're kind of gearing up to uh release the nibs uh replacement nibs nibs. for the note air you need nibs yeah. yeah that that's something you need uh we're gonna go into more questions in a bit but we're just gonna do our final topic here which we agreed on is distraction free devices <laughs> Now, distraction-free devices can be anything that really doesn't have Google Play, doesn't have a high level of Android, doesn't have audio, really doesn't shove apps and, and preloaded stuff in your face. So for example, a good example of this is Onyx. Onyx is not distraction-free inherently. They have a lot of apps, they have uh, a lot of cellular communication, they have uh, uh, Wi-Fi, they have um, preloaded stuff, Google Play, um, you know, speakers, text-to-speech, all that stuff. Remarkable is distraction free you open it up you draw that's it 
There's no apps. You can't even drag and drop files to it without a computer software. So that's what we're talking about. Distraction free, not distraction free. Michael, go. Yeah. So, I mean, um, we used to call e-readers that didn't have like a lot of perks, you know, okay. So it wasn't very long ago that e-readers didn't have a web browser. They didn't have right. like- They were uh, experimental. Yeah, they they didn't have Wi-Fi. They didn't have integrated bookstores that you had to basically plug it into your computer and drag and drop eBooks to it. And, you know, they didn't have Facebook. They didn't have Twitter. They didn't have social media integration. They didn't have a barrage of notifications because they had no notification delivery system. Um, right. And then, you know, basically tablets came along and inundated us with distractions and e-readers basically thought, yeah, you know, I think it would be a good idea for us to, you know, say for Kindle, to add Goodreads, uh, right. notifications about Kindle X-Ray, uh, new features that are available, you know, a lot, you know, do you want to share this passage with your Twitter followers or your Facebook followers? It's like a lot of sort of unnecessary social integration that people generally don't even need. And it's hard to actually turn off. So we used to call e-readers that didn't have a lot of bells and whistles limited because they, they were. Now companies are actually using distraction free as a key selling point for the mm -hmm. device because you know, your eye from your everything, you know, a lot of people just don't read on e-readers. They read on their no. smartphone because that's always with them. So you could yeah. read um, a news article, you could read some fan fiction, uh, you could read anything. I mean, you know, on an iPhone, they have apps for everything, whether you like manga, magazines, newspapers, replica editions, subscriptions to the New York Times, you can read all that and it's all optimized for like the screen. Uh, E-readers and e-ink devices, like on the other hand, um, some just do not embrace anything other than just a distraction free experience and we've seen this with the remarkable one and a remarkable two which peter is showing you right now that all it does is take notes and that's not a bad thing it, it takes notes very well and that's all it does it doesn't say <clears throat> your uh castle has been raided go and defend your castle you just got 100 gold none of that's going to happen on this because it's just for reading and it's just for writing that's it Whereas you go into like an Onyx books or a boy you or something with uh, uh, Android on it and there's tons of distractions, but you know, the whole distraction free thing is a matter of perspective because you could get an Onyx books and turn off all the permissions, turn off all the distractions and uninstall everything you can. And you're left with a distraction free device, but with Onyx, it's good because you with a boy you as well. And uh, Sony and all these other guys that run Android or Android updates is that, it's good to have the option there if you need it. If I wanted to go on X mode and go on Instagram, I can on the Onyx, but I can't on the Remarkable. So the Remarkable and the uh, like the Fujitsu and all these distraction free devices are pretty much like one trick ponies because they only do one thing. And if you wanted to do more, you have to buy a new device. You can't just do magically more on devices that are distraction free and as you were talking about distraction free i was like distracted by my I phone saw it's you. Like, i was like oh great I, I gotta pick up the pieces now <laughs> a new star trek discovery episode has been released the season oh, is that why episode that why two of the mandalorian has been released you know just oh, two nice. notifications at once yeah, yeah, from yeah. like from crave because in canada oh. we don't we you know it's not really available on crave. any platform yeah, yeah. Uh, I'll talk about one more thing and then we'll go into some comments is the Kaite is the absolute uh, uh, pinnacle of distraction free. It's not even e-ink, but it is using the same technology and same inherent technology that e-ink uses. When you touch something to the surface, the black particles go up or down respectively. That's what this does. It basically is a magnet board where you write there you go, where you write on it and things show up. And the reason this even exists is because it doesn't have batteries, it never dies, and it's import free. So you don't have to pay any weird taxes or duties or luxury taxes. And this is uh, surprisingly a good alternative for people that don't have $1,000 to spend on a 13.3. You can buy this for under a hundred bucks. We sell it, we ship it anywhere in the world. Um, but it honestly is good if you're just taking notes, use your cell phone app to uh, manage your application, you manage your notes and it's kind of cool. So like distraction free all the way from uh, very expensive devices like the Remarkable all the way down to these 
simplistic phones to magnet boards that don't do really much anything else. Distraction free seems to be on the rise. There's like five or six devices that do it. Don't forget the free right traveler. All the free right travelers. Great. It's this, we just did a review on it. It's this clamshell. It's the size of a keyboard and you can write on it. It's a full size keyboard and it's just for writing. You turn the Wi-Fi on or off folder ABC, just type away. They actually have full-size typewriters as well. Obviously they're digital, but it's this huge, like gigantic metal housing thing. It's, it's really cool. It's super like coffee shop, write your screenplay kind of level of uh, uh, like a hipster approach to it, you know, kind of that vintage meets uh, technological combination kind of thing. You're really cool. Yeah. Distraction free is definitely, um, definitely on the rise. Yeah. And I mean, it's, we i guess we just like live in an environment that's like non-stop distractions like from our it's smartphones true. to our tablets like it, you know i have like just on my desk here it's like ipad air iphone even. samsung galaxy like development There's device so stuff like right you know here. yeah it's like my desk yeah. is just like packed with like just yeah. things you know and it's like things yeah. i use but i mean it's just like non-stop distractions and like you know, basically, like, it feels like I have to, like, go to the dentist to be just uh, unplugged from everything. It's just, like, it's so... And even then, so... you look up and there's a TV above Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so there's, like, no way to turn, turn it, it off. off. Yeah. yeah. But it's just, like, I just tune it out and don't, like, look at it. But, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, there's very few places that we can go to be, like, totally disconnected. Like, I know some people that just, like, um, certain, like certain electronics like actually give them migraines and headaches like I i've heard of that and that's why a lot of people actually turn to e-readers because there's things like the flickering of a screen you don't notice on a computer screen or a smartphone or your tv it's flickering you know 30 to 100 but you see it if like if someone it. has a video camera that's and you're right. interviewing somebody and they're yeah. in front of a monitor you'll notice that the yeah. monitor is flickering that's what like, it's what actually doing and it's like, but it's yeah. imperceivable to like our eyes but you that's can't why i see it a lot of people eventually get vision disorders because like whether it's dry eyes or like other problems like glaucoma it's other things that just out like your eyes yeah yeah that just like make it impossible to stare at screens for like long term reading sessions which is why e-readers are like the perfect alternative they even make like secondary screens to replace like a monitor like dasung does it uh, onyx does it so you could actually like swap out your lcd monitor uh for an e-ink one if you wanted to that's very true and there's uh dasung makes uh, the secondary monitor the uh onyx books actually the lumi uh, which is probably one of the best uh, aside from the price it's very expensive it's upwards of seven eight nine hundred dollars us uh it's one of the best e-readers ever made it does everything and you can just use it as a secondary monitor in place of your computer screen and it has x mode meaning you can go online and watch videos you can watch us probably totally so, um yeah there's a lot and of why wouldn't you want it? why that. wouldn't you, why watch, wouldn't you us? want to watch us oh, at 4 a.m in italy i mean no thank you so much i appreciate that um shall we go no, we some really questions? we do we do appreciate our audience no, and seriously everybody there watching people... everyone supporting us on youtube we're almost at a right. hundred thousand subscribers that's cool. um so cool. if you haven't already subscribed, subscribed. If you have like a lot of friends, uh, tell them to subscribe. If you have like a thousand sock puppet accounts that you're not doing anything with, you can also subscribe. No, I'm just kidding. We want Don't do everyone. That. We want everyone to start a secondary email with Yahoo <laughs> right now, and then subscribe to YouTube to our channel. No, uh, that that that's okay. I think but that like do... breaks a bunch of terms and services. So I know. Don't, right? don't our actually, subs will like start we, going we actually, down. We actually no, don't approve of joking. that. No, don't do that. Uh, um, subscribe to us normally and tune in because we do do these live shows. We give stuff away once every week on these live shows, and we always have a contest running always in the background on youtube.com slash Cody reader right now we're giving away a 32 gigabyte oasis three that's like 300 plus dollars you're giving away absolutely free and it ends in five days so you can go there and subscribe and like and comment saying you've uh joined because uh that will go to you absolutely free um on the day yeah we'll basically like announce the winner on next week's show uh we mm. do it on the video but it, it'll be it'll be oh easy. you're right 
Yeah, no, that matches up. On the 14th is exactly the day of the draw. You're right. Yeah, that's um, that's a great idea. Sometimes they don't uh, line up with our live, but that will line up directly with our live uh, broadcast. Nice. Word up. So let's ask, let's answer some questions from chat. All right. Cornelius asks, is this live or pre-recorded? It's live, Cornelius. We are, of course, live every Saturday. Um, we might give or take a day, give or take a couple hours. There's, you know, uh, daylight savings time and all that, but mostly every weekend. Uh, someone said, uh, Ace of Base says, bro or bros, I have ordered the Remarkable 2, batch 8, and I'm looking heavily at the Note Air. What do you guys think as an either or as I can't do both? Yeah, we understand. You can't buy both. Um, if it was my personal opinion, I would say the Air. Reason being... And a lot of people are saying, you know, um, oh, the Remarkable is distraction free. You should go with that. And if you just joined us 20 minutes ago, if you uninstall everything on the air and turn off all the notifications, all the permissions, you have an identical item to the air that has a glow light, that has arguably a better pen, that has more functionality, that has, you know, the ability to go on the internet, on Wi-Fi, browse. It's so much more things you can do on the Onyx. Don't let the fact that it has Google Play and has uh, Android spook you. You don't have to do any of that. You can skip the setup process and just use it as a note taker. But it's nice to have the hardware there and the capabilities of Android 10 if you need it. What do you think, Mike? Remarkable or Air, basically? Well, I think the one thing Remarkable has going for it is that it offers like different types of style styli that you can buy so you can get like That's the stock true. stylus or you can get like the marker like the marker plus uh, marker plus remark- or you know you're right two. you were gonna say the the signature you can still buy that uh, from the one and use it on the two yeah um yeah but i mean right now remarkable is not selling the signature like the marker plus independently on its they own. Own, yeah. yeah they only offer it as like a bundle uh same with like uh remarkable the one kind of cool thing about the series is that uh they offer like five or six different cases that you can buy so mm-hmm. uh basically there's only one type of case that onyx makes for the air so they onyx only makes one stylus for the air and they only make one case for the air which you basically get for free with the purchase whereas remarkable you know you want like a leather case cool pay like 89 bucks you want like a felt case cool pay this much you know they have like four different types and like four or five different colors of each so they offer a tremendous amount of like flexibility and, and options uh to go with it so Remarkable because they only have two products in their portfolio. They're more of yeah. they could they it's have like they 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 yeah. yeah it's more simplistic. They could customize products just for one product line. Whereas with Onyx, you know they they really don't. So they can't really offer you know leather cases and felt cases. Made and there's some, so many so, different devices they have and shapes and sizes and form factors as well. Yeah, and they don't really like Onyx isn't really a digital stationary type of company. So it's no. they don't they don't offer an entry level stylus, a mid level and a premium stylus. They only have one stylus that comes with uh the air which is different from all the other Onyx styluses. So they right. have the stylus that's just designed for the air and then they have a, a styli that's basically for everything yeah. else uh you know what's weird i might uh chime in on that remarkable great devices uh great writing feel all that they're the only device mainstream that you don't get a stylus with purchase you actually have to you have to pay for it you aside from pre-order bundles and all that and uh you know bonus bundles and um uh any sort of discounts you can't actually like the device itself once you choose it it says choose a stylus and you have to pay for even the base model stylus so currently it's the only device where you actually technically don't get a stylus for free every other device boy use Xiaomi, uh onyx everyone gives you a stylus they actually don't which is just kind of interesting to me yeah i'm actually in the market to buy a juicer and i was ready to pull a trigger and in the comments it was it was like the the juicer like it's basically uh, what's known as personalized juicers. So they're basically like a juicer that has like, basically you put a cup that you drink out of, like, you know, it's, it comes with like it, it, but the one I wanted to buy actually didn't have a lid for the cup. 
So if you wanted <laughs> to like, lid? <laughs> yeah. So if like, imagine like it was like, you would have to drink out of it. Like with this, Yeah. you know, yeah. it didn't actually come with a lid to put on top to sip out of. You actually had to buy that separately. So I was like, well, if they're too cheap to like put in a lid with on a personalized blender from like a company that's like very well known uh, Ninja that I'm not going to buy it. I'll buy something else. And so I went with like actually a model that I think was like higher rated than it. Yeah. 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 Oh, nice. That's terrible. Uh, someone says, I'll give this one to you, Mike. Um, do you think the new paper white will have USB C? Okay. So here's the thing about, so the, the paper white is the most likely e-reader to be refreshed. Uh, it was supposed to be done this year, but COVID and, and oh, yeah. so a Amazon does business with Foxconn and Foxconn was, you know, Foxconn and, and that's area was like almost at the epicenter of like the, the cro coronavirus. So yeah. um, up until just very recently, like I, I, as of like a month ago, they were running at like 25% capacity. So that's not enough to like do all of their normal clients works and to do a new e-reader from Amazon. So I don't think that USB, okay. So basically the, what, what's, what's Amazon going to do with a new paperweight? Uh, you know, um, they're not going to do color. It's too early in the color life cycle for Amazon to pull the trigger on color. Let's be honest. Color e-ink is not ready for a prime time cu customer no. like Amazon. What are they going to do? They're going to refresh the Kindle Paperwhite with a USB cable and say that that's the big upgrade on why you should spend gonna, $119. They're going to put, put out the new Kindle Paperwhite with a USB-C port and they won't give you a cable like Apple. So you have to buy the cable separately. That's what they're going to do. Oh, that'd be hilarious. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm, I, I was actually trying to rack my brain on like, should you just like- Audio? What- they have audio. They have like Bluetooth headphones that you can like actually on board audio. You know, if I had to stretch, if you're asking me, like, what would they do? Onboard audio, but Speakers. that hasn't that hasn't even touched Kindle since the Kindle Touch, which is like 2013. So I doubt they'll do onboard audio. Yeah, I mean, I could see them integrating Alexa, uh, so yeah. Alexa could actually read like Kindle books aloud. Uh, they, yeah. uh, as my Alexa just turns on <laughs> as I'm, as I'm talking about her. Did it really? Yeah. I, I turned mine off. I, I don't know why anyone would voluntarily bug their own house. Um, yeah. So uh, that, yeah, uh, we don't know if it'll come out with a USB-C, but we sure hope so, I guess. But uh, moving on to another question here. Uh, when, how often should I replace the stylus nibs? We, we jumped ahead and, and uh, answered you that one. Um, someone says, do you think there will be any 7.8 inch and up pure e-reader? It seems that the cost of adding up, uh, it seems that the cost of adding note-taking is so low companies rather make note-taking device than put a note-taking name price tag. Yeah. So it, large screen e-readers are hard to find. Uh, boy, you like book Mars 7.8. Pocketbook, InkPad Pro, and InkPad X, 7.8, 10.3, respectively. That's it. There's not a whole lot well, of... Well, Cobo Forma, what is that? Like seven inches, eight inches? Uh, eight. That's right. Eight, and the Oasis is seven. So there's not a, a, a massive amount of just e-readers out there. There's probably five or six that go above the six-inch uh, size that are, are worth talking about. So we don't know we have seen a shift we've seen the priority really go into just keeping six inches alive i mean look at the nia just came out you know what i mean the poke three just came out so there's that shift of keeping six inches alive or if you don't want that you want note taking there doesn't seem to be that middle ground and only a few companies are touching it the Lightbook Mars is two years old. The Inkpad X is almost a year old. So there's just, there's not a lot out, there's not a lot, lot out there in terms of not having note taking capabilities. No, there's just very little selection. And just because like a device like can take notes doesn't mean that you have to use it in that way. That's, that's exactly what we were saying about the Remarkable. You don't have to use that. It's nice to have the hardware there, but you can just take the stylus and just say, you know what? I don't want to do that. I want to read my PDFs. I want to swipe with my finger. You can do that all day long. 
totally. I mean, one of the underrated things about a lot of the modern e notes and, and e readers in general, except for Kobo and Barnes and Noble, that they have mm. like Bluetooth so you could actually plug in a pair of headphones That's right. and buy yeah. and listen to podcasts or like audiobooks and stuff like that. So these these Android e readers provide a little bit more flexibility um, in terms of uh, being able to deal with a specific podcaster or you know to download spotify and like listen to the joe rogan yeah, experience exactly. or something so i hope that uh clears things up someone says yo this channel is tight as you know what thank you very much that's not a question i just wanted to read that that's very nice uh modern smartphones need video clear ink may fix it but not as a pure e-ink smartphone so that's around when we were asking would you replace your phone uh funnily enough uh, John Smith, if you use a Hisense phone with speed mode on, you can watch videos. It's not going to look like your computer screen. Very few e-ink devices actually look like a computer screen to the point where it's smooth, but you can watch videos. You, you don't have to think of it as uh, when I go to e-ink, I, I am no longer able to watch videos. You, it has come a long way. Um, so someone, I wanted to ask this one's, you're going to love this, Mike. What would you say was memorable about doing your first unboxing on YouTube? Remember the ones where we had like a kitchen towel when it was just the two of us before we had the offices and all the employees and, stuff? and it wasn't you even I... ironed. No. <laughs> it was like it was like a we towel like... that I actually, I actually yeah. used so it was all yeah, yeah, yeah. And stuff. We were like, what do we need for a background? Grab a towel, you run over to the kitchen, you put a towel on a glass table. And, we're and like, it wasn't oh, like it wasn't okay. just like a white towel. It was like a pattern no, it was, towel. It was patterned. Oh my gosh. Su Susie B, that is I said this in the thing. That is the best question ever. What is the most memorable about that? Was that we had no idea what we were doing. We were unboxing, I think, like the the Kindle keyboard or like the Nook Simple Touch or something. It was a mess. We had, that was when we were starting out. Like, uh, I think we started doing videos about 10, 11 years ago. That was ridiculous. But thank you so much for asking that. That is hilarious, man. Yeah, oh, it kind of like reflects back funny. on like, uh, that's funny. like, I think we started the website in like 2008. So a year after yeah. the first, the first Kindle yeah. came out. And it was a couple years before we started doing videos. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Basically we're, we're just like an online news publication and it's like, then suddenly like Kobo came onto the scene. Barnes Noble was on the scene. Sony started like getting involved in e-readers. Yeah. And like we went to CES sort of that one year and it was just like all e-readers everywhere. Like, right and e-readers yeah. like green tech was making an e-reader and everyone was making alternative e-paper displays like bridgestone the tire company made the road e that's right play. yeah liquid vista miracell it was just like non-stop innovation like every single like few months there was something new coming out some new screen tech some interesting things and it was like you know, this is like a cool industry because it's like nonstop competition, all these like different companies doing things. And then like four or five years later, it's like he like, dominates everything. Uh, Amazon we bought it. We got Amazon to it pretty early. Look, yeah. Amazon yeah. bought Liquid Vista, didn't do anything with it. Miracell was a dead technology. Bridgestone canceled their e-paper. Clearing never did anything with like their e-paper display. And it's like, ma. Here I thought yeah. like it was gonna be all this cool stuff all the time, and lately it's just like just eating. We're doing our best to you know make it interesting and keep it interesting. Uh, Jay Van Sickle, totally. who I know have, have actually been with us for ten years on YouTube. Thank you, Jay. Uh, seeing your face around uh, many a time. He said, um, "Can you actually buy a remarkable without the stylus, or is that just a promo trick?" That that's actually very. Um, that's a good point because although when you're buying the remarkable at the checkout process, you can't not buy the stylus, like you have to choose one. I don't know if you can actually skip that. So that's actually, um, that's a very good uh, uh, question. I actually don't I know. I know so. with the first generation remarkable when they were crowdfunding it, 
uh yeah whether it was like i think kickstarter or indiegogo or something like that they the initial cr- remarkable one the stylus was extra during their crowdfunding campaign you could just buy right. the unit or you could buy the unit and the stylus and then everyone start every, once everyone started getting their shipments everyone was like what WTF? I can't actually use this device on it, with a yeah. stylus. It's like a, a writing tablet, and you're not giving us like a, a, a stylus. And so when Remar- right. Remarkable started selling it directly, they bundled like the the stock stylus with it, and then they uh, offered like a higher end like alternative that you can buy. That's right. Um, someone says Black Friday deals. Well, without turning this into too much of a promotional thing, yes, we will be doing Black Friday deals, of course. Uh, Michael and myself have these little uh, online board meetings with the rest of the guys and the people who do the online stuff. And we just kind of see what needs to be cycled around, what we need to kind of push forward to um, be more appealing to everybody. And yeah, we're going to do Black Friday deals, of course. So uh, stay tuned for that. We'll put a little newsletter out and uh, we'll be on Facebook and yeah, of course we'll do Black Friday deals. Yeah, we've been doing them like every year for like the last like yeah. three or four years. Yeah, for yeah, long time. Uh, someone says uh, from Jose. I'm not sure if it's the same gentleman from Chile, but uh, if it is, hello. Uh, do you think? Uh, when do you think a color e ink note taking device will come out? Uh, we actually covered this last week when um, uh, you can actually still watch that the video on demand. And uh, actually, me and a couple of the guys uh, went to the Tokyo. Um, I think it was called the SeaTac or something in 2019. And we had firsthand 10.3, we hands on 10.3 inch. You could select blue, you write in blue, you select red, you write in red. And all this is on our YouTube channel. It's one of our highest viewed videos of all time. And uh, yeah, the technology's done. I mean, evidently we touched it. We, we played with it. it. It was real. We don't know when it's going to be commercially available. No, Michael, if you have any insight, now's the time. Yeah, uh, Ian told me that I wrote about a couple weeks ago. They are developing the uh, advanced. Uh, so the it's called like just print or Kaleido. Yeah, that was the- Kaleido. Uh, but they are, are actually doing a V2 version of it with faster refresh, uh, a deeper grayscale, clearer text more colors and a higher dpi so that's five things that they're bringing and those are just the things that they told me like in advance because they actually haven't announced it yet so but they told there me just because like i'm like the biggest e-ink fiend out there and i'm like you the only fiend. person that's that i'm not like the only person that really writes about it like on like a weekly basis like so they they tell me a lot of things so anyways um they said at the end of this year uh, it'll be done, but we won't actually see a commercially viable product using sort of the second generation color e-ink uh, until quarter Q1 or Q2 of next year. So what is that's like anytime from like January to like from now to six months, basically. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Um, interrupting Django Ferreira Mong, I apologize if I'm not saying that correctly, has just donated $6.99. So thank you very much. Very much appreciated. You are a fine man. Fine man. We really appreciate that. Seriously. Which brand does best, does the best implementation of Android for reading and note taking? What are the best apps for reading and note taking for e-readers? I'll start it off because I actually have a lot of firsthand experience with the uh, production team here. The best brand for Android reading and note taking honestly is Onyx. And for a couple reasons, they have so many devices. They have six inches, they have 7.8, they have 10.3, 13.3. They're the only guys with 13.3. Onyx has the biggest track record. They've been around for 10, 11 years. They have generations and generations and generations to refine their products. Uh, They've made things that rival the Remarkable. They make things that rival the Sony. They're just, they have the most flexibility. They're running Android 10, meaning you can just download other apps if you want. And you're asking what are the best apps for reading and note-taking. You can always send us an email, drop us a line on Facebook, but 
things like Aldico, Moon Plus Reader, or like Adobe PDF readers for your PDFs. You can take notes, you can use the stylus layer. There's a lot of flexibility when you go with um, devices like Onyx that have Android 10 octa-core processing onboard audio rather than the distraction-free devices we were touching on earlier. Yeah, I mean, it all comes down to where you live. Uh, if you read in English or if you read like in Portuguese or Spanish, there's there's a- apps that are for that, that you can actually buy books. But do you like books? Do you like reading comics? Do you like yeah. reading magazines, newspapers, manga? I mean, it's just like, you know, do you do business with like the public library system? Do they lend out eBooks? You know, who do they deal with? You know, um, it's, it's, it's a very open-ended question. So it's like, I'm not too well adversed in a lot of like the Spanish apps and stuff that are out there, but I know that there's like a lot, I know like in the e-reading category of the like, Google play store, there's a lot of foreign language totally. types of things. Yeah. And if like your, your Google play is like Google play, like dot BR or, or something like that, you'll sort of get a more localized recommendation and stuff like that. Uh, do you like to sideload in your e- own eBooks or do you prefer to buy them? You know, it, there's, there's different apps for different requirements. So it's really hard to make like a general recommendation. Peter hit like the nail on like more of like the, the more well-known Android apps. Yes, yes. Um, not a question, but Jay Van Sickle said, thank you and donated $10 you are the man jay i know you've you haven't changed your display picture in a while um we know it we we we've seen you we've actually bounced some ideas off previous comments from you you seem to have your head on straight you know about e-ink thank you very much we really appreciate that that's that's very very nice of you you're a gentleman and a scholar thank you very much uh, someone said, um, did the 10 inch color e-reader have a glow light? Yes, actually, ever since the Mimas by Boyu back in late 2018, early 2019, uh, 10 inch e-readers have, um... oh, 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 my apologies. I just uh, scrolled past too fast. You said color. Currently, no, there are no color e-readers bigger than six inches that have uh, glow light, no. Let's yeah, that over. the no, second I'm generation sorry. color e-paper, it was designed for 5.87 displays to 10.3. That's so right. That's why first you have gen- smartphones all That's the way right. to the six inch pocketbook. Right. So the first generation of color was only for 5.87 inch displays, which were all the phones. And then six inch displays, which was for like the Poke 2 color, right. the pocketbook color, and a bunch of like the, the Chinese e-readers that we reviewed. Right. Uh, Alv- Alvin from Philippines says, are there any e-ink smart watches? Currently, there are e-ink watches that use e-ink technology, of course, but in terms of smart watches, uh, I actually, I think Mikey would know this more than me, if anything, if any smart watches, other than that um, Seiko watch you had back in 2010 or whatever, are there any e-ink smart watches? Not smart. Oh, well, not really. There's sort of like, there's really none that are running like Android Wear or like another like major type of like platform. They're all running like closed platforms. Like I I wish... uh, I have it in another you're room. Lo- I, I, you're I don't, looking I don't you're wanna... like, oh, where yeah. is it? Yeah, uh, the Sony Fez Watch U, uh, F-E-S, not Fez, like yeah, uh, yeah. The, the hat. Um, yeah. So uh, that is like running an e-ink display um, it's not necessarily a small watch, but you, but you can change, watch, yeah. you can change not only like the, like the sort of the screen, but the band is also e-ink too. So you can yeah, actually yeah. show pa- patterns on the band and then show like a different image. I just have a picture of my face on my Fez watch. So whenever I'm looking at the time, it's like a big face of me. Like, oh yeah. Like, looking like, yeah, exactly. I'm like that's giving right. the wink and the gun. And that's like what I look at whenever I do it. I should take different pictures uh, for all the different times. So I'm like, and you just know, like this all you're talking uh, with your hands yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah and they can make like different state changes but oh, the man. sony doesn't allow you to do that I uh know. they only allow like a background picture but yeah you know with the apple watch they do have like uh animated ones that do that they have like one that has like mini mouse yeah. like uh tell the time and like if i could like just take pictures of me that would be totally awesome 
Oh, you're a, you're a character, man. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm on some... I, I just want simple things in life. I want That's true. a, a That's smartwatch that I could like take that I'm the picture of like the and, clock. And your hands are the hands. I totally. Don't... I mean, I'm not asking for the world. I'm not asking to win the lottery. I'm not asking to like, you know, invest in Amazon like 10 years ago when like the shares were like $50. Now they're like $1,500. Uh, instead, I invested in like BlackBerry. <laughs> like that's like, I think I spent like $20 a share. Now it's like $5 a share. Yes. You know, stonks. I just want <laughs> stonks. <laughs> I, just, I should just like abide by like the wall street bets philosophy and like short all like the big like tech stocks and just like lose thousands of thousands of dollars every day and just brag about it yeah no i hear you man it's all good it's all good uh aman cigar asks do you have flexible e-ink screens like paper well e-ink screens are inherently flexible yes but the shells are not there yet. For example, do I have an e-reader here? Well, I'll just use this as an example. The screen that uses, the screen that this uses is a very thin piece of paper-like device. It's the e-ink panel. It is flexible. The, the unit is not. If you go like this, the glass is gonna snap, the battery is gonna bend. So there was this device called the Wexler Flex 1 that was able to bend 80% of the shell, but no, the entire body, the PCB, the components, all the cables inside are not flexible. So no, that's unfortunately uh, the case. I don't know if you're searching for something cause you look like you are, so. Uh, yeah, uh, just to sort of like give him a sense on what we're yeah. sort of talking about here. Uh, let me just share this. Can I do another question or are you going to share right now? I'm going to share oh, okay. right now. Yeah. So e-ink generally is like there you e paper displays like this. This yeah. ribbon cable would like go to like the motherboard. That's and right. so e-ink like generally, if you look at like these sheets of paper, I mean, look. It, it is it, flexible. Yeah. I mean, look, look at the, the, and the ribbon cable, the ribbon cable being a ribbon is inherently flexible as well. Right. And so it could actually go in flexible cases. Like there's been some prototype, like, um, type of, of stuff that we've shown on our own YouTube channel that like, you know, you could see here, there's no hinge That's there. Right. Yeah. It, it's flexible e-paper that opens and closes like a real book. So yeah. there's, there's general, there's tech being sort of like developed in this sort of thing. Uh, this, I think this is one of the, the things that we posted here, uh, where this is sort of like a new prototype design that like, right. will just like open and close. And this is like, I think a 13.3 inch display. Uh, 10.2, so, it says right there. All right. Yeah. So 10.2. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, e ink by its very nature is flexible and there's various new initiatives being done right now to take advantage of that plus flexibility. Uh, but right now they're, they're, pretty rigid in terms of like design you, you're not going right. to really have like a e-reader that like will bend like that right now but there are things in the works i mean e-ink is prototyping a lot of things but don't forget e-ink does not market or release devices on their own they they release all these like concept devices and, and various like you know they, they get it commercially ready so and to prove to companies that yes we can make like a PCB and a battery that's such and such a size and such and such a position work and like open and close and it, nothing's going to short, you know, we can open and close it like X number of times before like the e-paper starts to give is it right. like um, the Samsung, like, you know, when they first were making their foldable phones, it, it folded it like four or five times and then it started to break in, you know I what know. I mean? So it requires it with e it requires a lot of effort to kind of get it to these stages. And it, it all takes like a company like Lenovo that uh, has taken right. gambles on e-ink laptops with a secondary display that's e-ink. So, and you know, they, they take gambles. So there are companies that take gambles with new forms of e-ink. And so hopefully someone will release like, and, uh, you know, basically this is the holy grail, uh, uh, something that opens and closes like a real book. As you can see my bookshelves behind me, I have like tons of paper books. Uh, right. I just like the two page spread with hardback novels. And if you can emulate that with an e-reader, sign Perfect. me up. 
Take my That's money. That's right. Um, Luca says, if you segment the parts, you can have some flexibility. You are right. If you have your device like this and the majority of the PCBs in the middle, no, you can't, you can't flex it. But what the Wexler Flex one did is they put everything right at the bottom so that you were able to flex 70%, 80% of the screen. So yes, it would have to come down to placement inside the device and flexibility. And Jay actually said, uh, for the record, I pointed out that the original Oasis looked like the Wexler. You are right. The original Oasis had bulk of the batteries and components in the side, and then they just made the rest of the device thin, thus promoting they had a really thin e-reader, even though they didn't. So you are right. Uh, another interruption, Alvin Ian Benipayo just donated 49 Philippine pesos. So we appreciate that. Thank you very much. That is very much appreciated. Good he work. Didn't a, he didn't ask a question alongside that, but he asked one earlier. We really appreciate that, Alvin. Yeah, we appreciate all the donations. So we may not be able to acknowledge a shout out to everyone, but if you make a donation, ask a question if you can, or if, you know, uh, that yeah. way we, it sort of stands out from like a lot of the other, you know, from it, chat, it which is a you know, huge banner so that we can kind of pick it out. But unfortunately, yeah, there's a ton of questions here we would love to uh, get to um, that we just can't. So uh, here's one right here, though. Any of the e readers have. Uh, Farsi, Persian, Arabic books. The e-readers themselves, Onyx, Boyu, um, Supernote, Kindle, everything's going to read the actual, if the file is in Persian, Arabic, Farsi, then yes, it will likely work on the device. The menu, however, the settings, the menu, the navigation, the keys, a lot of devices don't have support for those. Pocketbook does have the biggest international spread of languages. So you can change everything into Farsi and Arabic. But for example, on the Kindle, there might just be German, French, Spanish, Dutch. There might not be your language on there. Although if you put a Farsi PDF on a Kindle, a Farsi PDF, uh, uh, sorry, a Persian PDF, an Arabic PDF on the Kindle, yes, it will be in that respective language, of course. I um, think that Amazon recently signed, yeah, so as of 2018, uh, various Ar Arabic languages are supported yeah. like on a Kindle because they're selling it in the, the uh, United Arab Emirates. So there's like, uh, I think it, as of the launch on 2018 in summer, there was 12,000 books. There's probably been more, um, yeah, if you go to like amazon.com slash Kindle Arabic, uh, it'll tell you uh, sort of like uh, give you some books and stuff like that. Um, Harry Potter has been doing it. It doesn't actually sh tell you the actual languages, whether it's like hmm. uh, Farsi or, you know, uh, they just sort of mention Arabic a bunch of times, but they don't actually say like some of the more dialects of it. Um, but yeah, so Kindle will do it for the most part. Uh, Kobo line of e-readers actually allow you to sideload in your own fonts, uh, sorry, uh, of your own like, um, you know, uh, air, like font packs that they don't support mm, yeah. for specific uh, the, languages. The Unicode or whatever it's called. Yeah, so yeah, if, yeah, you, yeah. if you have like a special like, font pack for your language you can like load that in so when you read ebooks it'll display yeah. those characters and kobo does support that but kobo doesn't sell like a lot of books right uh, in arabic or <laughs> the other the other dialects like in that sort of greater uh you know arabia region arabic is a really widespread language i think it's one of the most top five or top 10 spoken languages in the world or something uh someone who is named no name says i'm late to the party did they already talk about e-ink phones yes we did you can watch this video on our youtube channel it will not go away um we'll we'll try to put some timestamps as well and uh you can watch that up yeah uh, it's, it was sort of like <clears throat> midway through the show so yeah as as you're watching a live you can actually scroll back as yeah, it's yeah, live yeah. and watch us at previous points and then if you scroll back all the way to the end you'll sort of catch us live again and if you somehow scroll into the future and know what's going to happen to us please tell us because that would be awesome uh, yeah like said... <laughs> if there's like an earthquake or yeah, like yeah my roof collapses like or it's like mike um, you better be careful tomorrow at noon it's like wait what <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Better be, uh, you better watch your back. You know something I don't, you know? Um, but, but, but being like, you know, being on the internet with you, uh, 
all these years has given me quite a thick skin because not yes. only do like sometimes users like hate on what we do and hate oh, on us every personally second but it, we both insult each other like oh, dude, pretty, pretty, the pretty rigorously done uh someone said is it risky to swap sd cards on your e-reader well um actually michael posted a uh picture on the um repair article you did i think and it showed that some e-readers use sd cards as the storage and if you're using an old kobo then yes you would not want to take that out sometimes they are welded and if they're not that SD card has been specifically formatted to only work on that device. If you take it out and put something else on, the device uh, won't boot. Uh-oh. Coffee grounds from the bottom oh, of Oh, man, come on. Return that, man. Yeah, so if you were to take that SD card out and think, oh, I'm going to put in a one terabyte card, the device doesn't have the necessary system files on that new card, and it won't boot. So yes. If your device has a SD card that's either welded or is the primary storage to your e-reader, it is extremely risky to touch that. If your SD card has a slot on your e-reader and you push it in, take it out, you do it all day long, doesn't matter. Yeah, but it's important to note that like certain as like there's not a lot of sd cards any made anymore with e-readers yeah. like uh amazon had it on the first generation kindle and yeah. supported it didn't do it, it anymore never Early again Kobo e-readers had sd card they abandoned it uh yeah. nook i don't think they ever did it uh, sony sometimes some models that they had it um i think right now Boyu is the only the Boyu like book brand of, of e-readers are the only ones that consistently every device they issue have an SD card. Other companies, most most of everyone has abandoned it uh, in terms for using internal storage as like a marketing point. So buy the third generation device because it has 64 gigs of memory instead of 32. You know, so you're like, well, I, all my PDFs are kind of large and I'd right. like to have more on my device. So maybe I'll buy the 64 gig version. Uh, so someone just said yes, Michael. The old Nook had an SD card, and now that I'm remembering it, you're right. We we deal with hundreds of different devices over a decade long. So in yeah, our they like, just did like, this have it? We don't know. <laughs> like yeah. I'm the primary primary writer these days on the blog, so right. it's like, you know, did the Nook Color have an SD card? It's we yeah, were I think so it had that little tablets flap on the side. I'm not sure. See, that's why our our viewers are so nice to chime in and and pick up the pieces because yeah i didn't actually remember that till he said it yeah i'm uh, more some... or less i more or less remember pretty well key events in the e-reader industry uh key like first e-readers the comp the stories that brought them to the market right. so right. it's like i've written about the history of kobo uh from when they were like uh, a company known as the Short Covers, which was a pet project of the CEO of Indigo Books and Music, the largest bookstore chain in Canada. So it's like, I know the histories of these companies and like key executives, because I've met them a number of times, uh, more yeah. than I know, did this product like 10 or 12 years ago has an SD card or not? <laughs> I just, you know, <laughs> there's certain true. things that like, I carry with me and some yeah. that I don't just because like what in 2020 how many products do you think we've reviewed oh man we've had more reviews and like I said if you're just joining us people randomly sending us things to our office is there a bug in your place yeah I don't know <laughs> it was like what was that yeah uh we have we have had so many videos I, I think there was a hundred day period where we did a video every single day on our YouTube channel because we got Alexa, more turn on the salt we got more review samples than we could actually handle to the point where we, we had to do a video a day, if not more than uh, a video a day, just to, just to keep up. Um, and someone early on asked that, uh, what do you do when you run out of ideas? Well, then we do top, top five lists, top 10 lists, best ofs, uh, you know, writing experiences, stuff like that. So when we run out of those review samples, we sometimes other companies reach out to us and say, hey, do you want our this or that? Uh, we reach out to other companies and say, hey, we would love to review your product. We would love to, you know, get a sample, et cetera. So um, that's kind of how that works. Uh, someone said, what is the best part about your guys' job? Mike, you can handle that one first. <clears throat> Uh, constantly being entertained. Uh, yeah. 
Like, um, yeah, I mean, I've never really written, did book reviews like on the website just because like, I don't, there's just so many sites out there that do book reviews like better than I ever could. And like, um, you know, so I read a lot, but I rarely talk about like the books that like I read, you know, and like I'll read like a book a week, sometimes two in a week. Uh, either on an e-reader, but I, I enjoy developing like an actual hardcover edition of like first edition books, sort right. of like, I like collecting first editions of like authors I like, um, authors I grew up reading. So it's like, I'll, I'll pay some money for first editions and stuff like that. Um, so ha- having the flexibility to be able to do a hobby like that, that's, that, that I think that that's really cool. In terms of e-readers, I enjoy the prototypes that keeps me interested Mm. because like sometimes it feels like when you cover e-readers for a living, things can get not boring, but things can get like repetitive. Yeah. Repetitive. Like here's another six inch. It's like great, great (laughs) dot, you know, you gotta, you gotta make something out of it, you know? So that's why, yeah, I agree. It could get repetitive. Yeah. It's like, E Ink is the dominant player. We had front light technology. We had amber LEDs, so for color temperature systems. We have USB on most e- USB C on most e readers, and most e readers now run a modern version of Android. But right. I mean, that's more or less like a software experience. It's not really a fundamental change to the way it's that not the we read on e readers. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, just like reading in general, like we still read on our smartphones, we still read on our tablets, our laptops, our our Kindle for PC for a computer. You know, we're just not reading on e-readers, although that's what we, you know, talk about for the most part because we're pretty knowledgeable in it. But we recognize that not everyone writes on e-readers uh, or reads on e-readers. They read on a myriad of other devices. Right. Um, yeah, so... Oh, that was it, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, yeah. personally, I'm waiting for VR or AR to take, like, reading immersion to another That'd level. Like, you know, Oculus is doing some interesting things. Um, You know, uh, Steam VR, there's sort of like $1,500 VR headset looks cool, but it's mainly aimed at gamers. You know, even like uh, my Alexa glasses that I bought, sort of the the day one editions, Um, you know, it could play audio books like in your ear. So it's basically glasses, like glasses except it has like thicker edges here and they have like speakers and touch screen controls on mm-hmm. the side uh so it's like the the bow the bo- bows like uh sort of editions where they have like speakers near your ears so only you can really hear the music um i think it's it'll change once sort of ar sort of takes effect where like you could wear smart glasses into like a bookstore and actually see like a synopsis of a book by just looking at its spine and then you know tapping on it to like open up like the first page and you could actually like see it superimposed on your glasses i think that'll change the book buying shopping experience and i think vr will like take immersion um to the next level so i think like tech going forward will sort of offer fundamental changes in the way that we read in a way that audiobooks yeah. have really changed the way that we sort of like listen to a novel instead of having to read it i think so um there's no reason ar can't do that they already have you point your ar phone at a desk and dinosaurs pop out so there's no reason you can't do that with a phone uh sorry with books <clears throat> someone said uh i missed their question a bunch of times i apologize he said is there any manufacturer that sells Manufacturers sell USB external e-ink monitor can be used with smartphone. Yes, as we said, the uh, Onyx, you can connect your smartphone to it. And the Dasung, basically it takes any, uh, it takes any um, uh, signal in for the most part. Now there is obviously compatibility issues. You have to make sure you get the latest model of both of those, not the ones that have that spider web nest full of uh, cables. You need to get the latest and greatest, and then you'll be able to uh, go along those lines. So I hope that helps. Um, 
and someone says, uh, I'm a geologist and where you guys are located in Japan is prone to earthquakes, because I guess we talked about earthquakes. Thank you. We knew that. <laughs> but uh, that's not why we opened an office here. We open up an office to better service all of our people worldwide. Uh, we seem to be out of questions. So we're hitting our two hour mark in a little bit. So I think we should uh, wrap up. Um, if you guys uh, want one last thing, this is an absolute free case. And this is a personal thing. I'm just going to chime in. This is not planned. This is an iPhone 8 case. If you guys want this, say I want it. I bought it for my wife. My wife didn't like the color. It's still factory sealed. You don't have to answer now. You can answer in the comments later. We'll ship it to you for free. Just a little generosity for sticking with us this long in the program. iPhone 8 case, if you want it. Probably more towards the ladies would like this kind of pastel little rainbow of a case, but it's brand new. It's factory sealed. And I'll send it to you for free. That's just a little personal thing of mine. Uh, one thing I want to talk about is something yeah. I actually written about uh, today. Uh, so Adobe uh, has released an update for Acrobat and this yeah. is available on iOS and Android. And it basically introduces a new feature called liquid mode, uh, basically taps AI in order to dynamically like make a, you know, basically a PDF file on a small display requires a lot of pinching and zooming. You know, right. because you're taking maybe a two page spread and you're having to like pinch and zoom to see the first column. This new engine will take it and reflow it based on a, a myriad of like different factors. So you can see here, like it'll identify key components of a PDF, like headings, paragraphs, images, lists, tables, and then reformats those parts into a dynamic hierarchy for smaller screens. So you can see from some of the images here, multi like uh, yeah. like multi layout PDF that you basically just scroll it up and down and read it like you would like a website. So this is available now uh, if you download uh, Acrobat for iOS or Android uh, or for uh, Google Play uh, Store compatible Chromebooks. But there's a few caveats. Uh, currently liquid mode is like really new. It just came out like last month and it's being pushed out live now. Uh, limited to 10 megabytes or less and then less than 200 pages long. So it has to be this. It has to be wow. under, under that for it to be able to be read. It'll probably be changed, but basically their, their engine right now was sort of designed for smaller documents and not like, you know, big extensive like magazines and like yeah. mangas and and digital comics and things like that it was basically like for like maybe contracts maybe for like previews or something like that there you go um so yeah we'll be maybe doing a video on that too we'll have to see uh, how our how our um what's on our plate but uh that is basically all the topics we have covered today we covered distraction free we covered batteries we covered e-ink phones and we have had a glorious winner from our little flash contest and we had a lot of donations a lot of people chime in and we really appreciate the support and we appreciate everyone kind of coming together in an e-reader community and weighing in on everything it's just it's a, uh, it's a wonderful yeah. thing and uh, unfortunately, Aman, uh, you did win the last contest, so we are going to be fair and give this to somebody else. I know you say you want this, but uh, we're going to mix it up and let everyone have a fair chance at winning. So um, yes, that was uh, pretty much everything I had to weigh in on. Michael, if you want to wrap it up, we can uh, say goodbye to our wonderful viewers. Yeah, so every Saturday we'll do it, same uh, bat time, same bat day. I knew you were going to say it. I was waiting. <laughs> um, yeah, it's cliche, but yeah, we, I know. you know, this is only our second live stream, but we're, yeah. we're really dead bent on like doing this because we could really expand on things that uh, we've filmed about, we filmed or things that we've talked about on the website, uh, whether it's just in passing or whether it was a featured article or something like that. So um, this show allows us to sort of like do something different and answer questions in real time and you know to to do q a sessions with our audience because this isn't this is pretty well why we started this show is in order to like 
for us to rant and rave about various things in the e-reader industry or to talk about new innovations. Each show has specific themes that we talk about. And then we devote like the rest of the show to like answer questions like in real time and stuff like that. Uh, we appreciate your donations. Keep them coming because it allows us to kind of continue doing this show. And, you know, as you know, as for the show, we gave two things away. So your right. donations, sneaky, like, sneaky. You're, you're you never know when they'll come. Exactly. They allow us to give away bigger and better things. And you don't have to be a paid subscriber to our channel, but we do offer the option. So all, underneath all of our videos is a join function. And we have like various tiers that we offer. So you can support our YouTube channel by that, or you can donate during the live streams. We really appreciate anybody that just watches the video and maybe leaves a comment that's deep and insightful rather than if you Kindle sucks, you know, we appreciate those questions. We appreciate those two, but we more appreciate the deep and insightful kind of jump over those. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Cool. Well, uh, so, uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed that. That was a riveting section and uh, you can watch it on VOD. It'll be on there and we, it won't go away and we'll try to put some timestamps there for you. Word up. So for